Madam Speaker, I came here today to speak on behalf of women and the parents of my district. Heck, honestly, I came to speak on behalf of all Americans who want their kids to be safe and secure in their schools and for people to be safe in their communities. I came here today to say that we all want these things because our hearts collectively break when any life is lost. We mourn for those lives lost needlessly. We need to do better and we can do better, which is why every single member of this chamber must without hesitation denounce, decline, and decide and oppose against H.R. 7910, the Politics Over Our Kids Act. This is common sense. Taking legal firearms out of the hands of law-abiding citizens does nothing but empower criminals. It's already illegal to commit murder. Has that stopped murder? Has that stopped violence? No. Madam Speaker, you said in your opening remarks that, quote, protecting our kids, what could be more important than that? You said, quote, we are here for the children. You went on to say that, quote, everything we do is for the children and that today's effort to strip our constitutional rights is, quote, a crusade for children. You must have forgotten the nearly 60 million children that have been murdered through some of the most horrific means during an abortion, all on your watch. You invoke JFK and say that our children are our best resource and our best hope for the future. Is that so? Why do you deny them their future by killing them in the womb? Sounds a bit hypocritical if you ask me. And you also made the statement that the leading cause of death for children is firearms then why does the data refute that? NBC News reported that motor vehicle deaths of kids from age 1 to 17 continues to be the number one cause of death. Spare me, Madam Speaker, that you are here fighting for the children because your three decades in Congress reflect a re record of anything but a fight for children. Certainly not the kids being trafficked at the border, not the kids being abused, not the kids fighting for their life in the womb, or the kids whose future is being stolen by abusive big government policies. If this were about protecting kids, then why does this bill do nothing to secure or harden our schools? Why was there no bipartisan efforts as part of this package? Why do these bills do nothing to address the mental health crisis that we are facing, driving the violence? It is the guns. It is not the guns. It is the people. People who are intent on committing acts of evil and violence will do so by any means necessary. That is a fact. But while you have conveniently forgotten so much, I certainly do not want to forget how many victims of domestic violence will be left without options to protect themselves if this garbage bill becomes law. Because it's the same party screaming to defund our police is the same party screaming about how you, a law-abiding citizen, should not be able to defend yourself. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that you have clearly all forgotten your oath an oath that we took here on this chamber floor to uphold and defend the United States Constitution. The Second Amendment is a part of that. Madam Speaker and to all my colleagues, the Constitution is not a la carte. General you can either expired. accept it all or none of it. Ge but you General cannot cherry pick expired. it. And if you can't un un hold, uphold your oath, then you should General resign with that I yield back. And all members are reminded once again to address their remarks to the chair. Gentleman from New York. Madam Speaker, I now yield one minute to the distinguished gentleman.